Hey there everyone, welcome to our tutorial on Google Keyword Planner. What every business owner should know about and how to use it properly. So if you don't know what it is, Google Keyword Planner is basically a free tool that is used to help make informed decisions about keywords. A keyword is basically anything you can type into a search box. People will call it long tail keywords and keyword phrases, and there's a bit of semantics that go into there. But if you're just starting out, that's not something that you need to worry about. Getting back to Keyword Planner, it was a tool that was built out by Google for advertisers. So it would be easier for them to go ahead and create campaigns on Google AdWords, basically letting them know information about who's looking for what at whatever time and how much money it's going to cost you to get that click. So you'll be able to find information relevant to your audience without wasting your time and money. So if you're just starting out, you don't really need to go ahead and spend hundreds of dollars every month buying new tools. You just try this out, see if you have all the information you need. And once you've narrowed down your results, your research into a specific section, and only then will you really need to worry about more and more complex and intricate tools. So to start off, we need to figure out what keyword research is and why do you need it and who needs it. So if you don't know, keyword research is basically research on keywords. That's pretty self-explanatory. Uh, figuring out what people are looking for, figuring out whether your business aligns with them, whether these are the right type of people, being able to rank on those ads, and finally to increase your sales and revenue. We're basically going to be going over three things in these tutorials, using keywords for SEO, using Keyword Planner to drive better results on your PPC campaigns, that's pay-per-click, and finally, the nitty-gritty of keyword research. We'll basically go ahead and look for a keyword that we use in our own agency so you have a real-life working example. Like we were saying, Keyword Planner can be used by two people. One are business owners that are trying to create campaigns and finding keywords to convert on. It's pretty much the same process. The only difference is if you're a business owner, uh, your goal is to look for a very low, small, com like very low competitive keywords so that you can spend as little money as you can and rank number one in that specific search term so you can get more visitors that are looking for the ideal target. But if you're into content, it's a bit different because you want to rank for that highest, hardest, most uh, the keywords behind with the most money. Uh, so if you're into content and if you have your own niche blog, if you're writing about gardening in San Francisco or something, it's a bit different because you want to rank for the highest competitive keywords. So if your goal is to make money on your blog with Google AdSense or something, then you want to make sure that you're trying to back keywords that have a lot of money behind them. So you don't want to be the number one blog of a very obscure category with no money behind it. Uh, one thing that we found recently when we were doing some research for software is that open source key, uh, programs like open source CRMs and open source anything has very little competition because to be honest, there is no money to be made in that. People that are looking for open source software are generally not the guys that are looking to pay money. So that's a really cool thing. If your model is generating revenue through Google AdSense, that's not the niche you want to be in. So that's one side of the spectrum. The other side of the spectrum are business owners. Uh, whether you want to try to create content on your own blog and rank for a specific keyword, or you want to figure out which keywords have actual value and which you can afford to get a click for. Because if you want to find something like diet or weight loss, it's going to be ridiculously competitive for you. So you can't really sell products on that through Google AdWords. Well, you could, but you're not really going to make a profit unless you have insane conversion rates because you'll be looking at spending tens and twenty dollars per click and above. So what you're trying to do is look for a decent keyword which you think will have good results. Now, of course, this doesn't justify everything. There's still a ton of A-B testing that you need to do. 
with words, with URLs, with designs, and that's a different topic for another day. Nowadays, the internet plays a very important role in our lives. More and more people are looking for specific services or products using search engines every day. Do you want to increase the efficiency of your site, store, or social network page? We'll help you search through the competition in order to successfully grow. In this modern, internet-driven world, you have to be at the top of the browser's list. We're a company that provides a full package of internet marketing services, so let's work together. We've helped hundreds of businesses and we can help you too. www.searchviral.com So, if you don't have an account already, go ahead and create one by going to adwords.google.com and you can just sign in with your Google account if you want to. The sign-up process is very basic. If you've built a Gmail account, you know how to do this. So once you create your Google account, you will be logged into the dashboard of AdWords and it'll show you what you've been doing. So if you haven't done anything right now, it's just going to be an empty dashboard. But on the navigation bar, you, you'll see an option called Tools. Inside Tools, once you click on the Tools menu, you'll have a bunch of sub-menu items. Go ahead and click Keyword Planner inside that. And now we're actually ready to begin. So once you're there, you'll see four different tools in two different categories. The first category is find new keywords and get search volume data. And the second category is for budgets and forecasts. So we'll only be looking at the first one really because unless you're a very advanced user and are currently spending a lot of money on AdWords, that's really not something you'll be looking into. Inside that, you have three options. Search for new keywords using a phrase, website, or category. Second option is get search volume data and trends. And finally, multiply keyword lists to get new keywords. The first option, the first tool, so we'll just call it a tool. The first tool is perfect if you are in the lookout for ideas. If you list your product or your seed keyword, your first thing, It'll basically create a bunch of derivatives of that keyword. It'll use various amounts of data from your product, your service. And if you input your website, it'll go through your landing page and it'll see what you're trying to sell. The more information you give this, basically, the better results it's going to give for you. So Surge Viral is a digital marketing agency, right? The main product that we actually sell is social media management. Let's go ahead and use this to get some actual results on a campaign that we can use to get more businesses to pay us to manage their social media. What we're going to do is go ahead and type social media agency. Or you could say social media management. Let's just go ahead and do that because that is the product, not the type of business. And we'll go ahead and put surgeviral.com uh, locations. So initially we are currently actually looking for a campaign. We're doing a bunch of ads to advertise to people in the UK. So I'm going to go ahead and have United Kingdoms, United Kingdoms as my country. So if you are in the UK, you would know that Google AdWords is expensive and that's not really a bad thing. As long as the market makes sense, you wouldn't really have a problem. There is a bunch of stuff that you want to do. This, the first thing is the product keywords. These are what your product is. You can add more than one. You can add like a bunch of stuff. So like if you have a, like, I mean, we could technically add like social media, SEO, digital marketing, and all of that to get results customized directly to your business, but we're doing this on a very micro level because we want to only sell this one product because we have capacity to handle a lot of that. And that would be perfect for us right now. Because unlike SEO, Google Keyword Planner is about giving you instant results. You don't want to plan for like two years ahead because these things change and you will have to keep on updating these stuff. So I'm ready to sell social media management, right? We have your landing page and we'll click uh, United Kingdom, English, we can check, check Google and Google and partners. I 
ideally search for Google because I don't need that information right now. So negative keywords, it, this is a very interesting, a lot of people completely disregard that. And that's a really bad thing to do. So what a negative keyword is, is that it removes a specific, it removes a specific type of people. So for example, if you're selling a, a item that you know that someone, if it's a very confusing item, right? For example, if it's social media management and we can put tools as a negative keyword because we don't want people that are looking for social media tools. We want people that are looking for social media agencies and it can be very confusing. So if someone is looking for a social media management tool, we're not their customer. We want people looking for social media as a service. So we have that, you can change the date range, how, since when have they taken it? What we generally do is we take it from July and we just take it as, you know, as far back as possible, just because we could get a better understanding of that information. We can have keyword filters based on the amount of searchers. So whether people are looking for it only a hundred times or you want to avoid people under a specific amount of searches and you can decide how the competition you want it to be. Of course, uh, initially, if this is your first time, I think you should avoid this, but yes, you have this information. You can only show ideas that are closely related. So what I, what we basically do is the first time we just go completely ham, um, and then worry about this later. You can always refine and you will have to refine, but don't worry about that right now. So we have, the search traffic data. So we know that, yes, it's gone up slightly on average. Now, for that specific keyword that we're looking for, social media management, that's pretty brutal. Uh, it has 1,600 searches, average per month, which is great. The competition is medium, but the suggested bid is insane. So if I'm getting a click, they expect me to put $20, well, $17, and that just doesn't make sense, right? So we need to figure out, I mean, we can do a bunch of things. We can try to figure out if there's something cheaper. Like, look at this, digital agency SEO. There's 10 people looking for it and the suggested bid is madness. So we can do a bunch of things, right? Now that we have that information, we can, we know the trends and data. You can see if people, what type of people look for this. Mobile has gone up. I think that, I mean, mobile data has gone up. That's probably just more people using mobile devices than actually that specific search term going up. So we have this information and how exactly is it? Do we find something that we think makes sense, right? Like social media for dummies. This isn't someone. <clears throat> so what you need to do is go through these keywords one by one really, and go through these ad group ideas, right? So ad group ideas are basically bulk keywords that, for example, if you click digital agency, it breaks down into little, little keywords in that for you to see if there's actually any viability. So a suggested bid, if you have keywords without suggested bids, that generally means that not a lot of people are, are advertising on it. It could also mean that there's very few people so that it doesn't really show stats. So for example, let me just check this out. You can open add it in ad preview to see if there's, okay, let's preview this in the United Kingdom and we will see, yeah. So there is a ton of advertising on this particular keyword and we really don't want to hit that even though it says like even though it's a dash it just basically doesn't have enough data because there's only probably like one or two searches so if they say 10 it's generally between 0 to 10 so we've done i mean before i did this video we went through like a bunch of keyword ideas to find exactly what we wanted and what we really figured out was you need to understand how a customer, your specific customer would think, right? So you would need to understand how your specific customer would think. And what we did was we found out that we can, uh, 
go ahead and I mean, a, a lot of agencies don't really have their pricing publicly visible. There was a ton of people that were just looking for social media management price. Even though social media management price was ridiculously expensive at $10, we managed to find that there's a good bunch of people that are searching for social media packages. You can see that the trend is generally going up. There is about 140 people. Yes, that's not a ton of people, but you don't need to find keywords with millions and thousands of people searching for. Actually, it's better if it's a small group of people that you think are going to be your perfect audience, right? We can see that as medium competition, but the suggested bid is low. There are people advertising on it, but it's something that you can test out because for for our product in particular, you're looking at spending three hundred plus dollars per month for us to manage that. So if we get a click at three dollars and then if we convert our sale at around twenty clicks, or even if we convert our sale at a hundred clicks, we still come out ahead in that campaign. What you really need to do is understand how a keyword plays into the role of traffic to conversion to lead and finally closing that sale. But you also need to understand price is very subjective. If someone is selling a $5 item, this doesn't even make remote sense, right? But if you are someone who is selling a large ticket item like us, then this is completely fine. Because uh, $3 is simply a drop in the proverbial bucket. If you're going to find someone who is very interested in seeing the price of the product that he or she is about to purchase. So what we would generally do is find something like this, maybe even social media marketing packages or social media services pricing, even though that is actually a bit competitive. So if we go ahead and look at the preview on how badly this is clustered, let's just put co.uk as well you can actually see our ad because we're the first rank there. Social media marketing pricing, how much should you pay? So I hope this video has helped you guys. We actually do have a tutorial on the website. The link will be in the description below. So we'll be creating a bunch of tutorials on everything to do with digital marketing, social media, SEO, and all of those good stuff. So if you need help with any of that, go ahead and click that subscribe button. Or if you own a business and you simply don't have the time to deal with this, go ahead and visit our website, www.searchviral.com. Nowadays, the internet plays a very important role in our lives. More and more people are looking for specific services or products using search engines every day. Do you want to increase the efficiency of your site, store, or social network page? We'll help you search through the competition in order to successfully grow. In this modern, internet-driven world, you have to be at the top of the browser's list. We're a company that provides a full package of internet marketing services, so let's work together. We've helped hundreds of businesses, and we can help you too. www.searchviral.com